Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Boatwright with Desert Rose Chiropractic in Phoenix, Arizona. I wanted to talk to you today about a condition called clunial nerve entrapment. It's probably one of the most commonly misdiagnosed problems in all of medicine or chiropractic when it comes to low back pain radiating down into the buttock. See, most doctors when they're going through medical school are taught that if there's low back pain and it radiates down into the buttock, that that's probably sciatic pain. Well, sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's not. And the thing about that is you have to be very specific about your diagnosis if you want to treat the right thing and get the patient well. So we're going to talking about, we'll be talking about the clunial nerve. So let me show you. Now this illustration shows the sacrum right here, the tailbone that lives right down at the bottom of the spine, big triangular bone. This bone here is the hip out at the side of the body. And right here would be the hip socket, the leg comes out like this. So the clunial nerve is actually out to the side of where these two bones to get, come together. Where those two bones come together is called the sacroiliac joint. And that's where we see that little dimple down at the bottom of our back. So just to the outside of that little dimple area is something that we call the osseofibrous tunnel. It's kind of like a carpal tunnel, except it's on the hip instead of in your hand. And the clunial nerve has to come down through that osseofibrous tunnel, and then it goes down to the center of the buttock. The sciatic nerve, on the other hand, is much lower, and it's much closer to the center part of the body. It actually comes out from underneath the tailbone and goes out below the hip socket itself and down the back of the leg. So most people that complain of sciatic pain usually are talking about pain down the back of the leg and a little bit in the buttock, but mostly down the back of the leg. The clunial nerve is way up high in the hip. Now, chiropractors are big about looking at bones, but most people want to see a different kind of picture. So let me show you something different. So um, this would be the, a person's back, the buttocks. So this is, these are the little dimples that I talked about. So that triangular bone would be right here, just like that. That would be the sacrum. The spine is up here. And we come out just out to the side, maybe an inch and a half, two inches, out to the side of that little dimple. And right in here would be that, that osseofibrous tunnel where the clunial nerve has to pass down through that. So the clunial nerve, if that clunial nerve is being bound in that tunnel and can't move, then every time we move it stretches that, that clunial nerve and causes it to fire and that causes pain. And that pain is felt right up the osseofibrous tunnel and throughout the distribution of that clunial nerve. And the sciatic nerve again would come out from underneath of that tailbone there, down in here, and then radiate down the back of the leg, underneath of the hip socket, which would be about right in here. So sciatic nerve is down here, the clunial nerve is up here. So you can see that it's very easy to differentiate clunial nerve entrapment from sciatica just from the location along. So once we've made a correct diagnosis, the next part is, what do we do about it? Well, because that clunial nerve wants to get stuck in that osseofibrous tunnel and stretch and fire and cause pain, then what we want to do is to work this, this nerve loose in that little tunnel so that it can slide like it's supposed to, so it doesn't bind and doesn't pull and doesn't, doesn't fire. And we can do that a number of ways. And one of the things that we can do is work with an adjusting instrument. This is a handheld uh, single shot uh, adjusting instruments called an activator and we can deliver forces along the, the length of that nerve to help work it loose so that it can slide like it's supposed to. Or we can use an electrically operated instrument like this impulse which delivers several pulses per second. But it does basically the same thing. It would help to work that nerve loose in that tissue that's binding it. Another thing that we can do is to use low-level laser therapy. This is what it would look like. Now don't let the term laser throw you for a loop. This is not a laser that cuts. It's just a, a cold laser, a low-level laser. And uh, it helps to change the way the, the molecular structures work in the cells 
and that helps to free the, uh, the nerve so that it can move like it's supposed to. It does to the colonial nerve uh, what we can also do to the carpal tunnel right in here. It helps to free that up and helps it work a little bit better. Helps to relieve the pain. So now you know a lot more about diagnosing and treating colonial nerve pain, colonial nerve entrapment, than most medical doctors and most chiropractors. If you go to a doctor and you talk to the doctor about colonial nerve pain, and the doctor has no idea what you're talking about, you may want to consider finding another doctor that does work with colonial nerve entrapment. I want to thank you for, for tuning in today. Um, please visit our website at www.drrickboatwright.com. Uh, Dr. Rick Boatwright is all small letters, it's all one word, and there's no W in Boatwright, it's just drrickboatwright.com. And if you have a friend or somebody that you know that's having buttock pain and they'd like to get more results than to what they're getting, please forward this um, video to them, we'd appreciate it. Thank you.